we came across an archive video of another faithful brother who endured four and a half years in prison in China. This is an interview from the past with Brother Harold King. I saw policemen coming into the lane, and they were as if they were facing a machine gun attack or something. They were creeping along the wall on the other side and running up into the lane. And so I said, Stanley, someone's going to get picked up this morning. Now, look at it, the police are in the lane because we've been seeing this quite often. They were picking up people all over the city. So what we did, um, we uh, uh, were just going to get on with our breakfast anyway when bang, bang, bang on our back door. <laughs> and I said, Stanley, it's us. They're after us this morning. But we couldn't, they couldn't find anything. They did take the files because we'd hidden nothing. And uh, uh, the thing is, we didn't have to worry too much because they had a spy in the congregation that gave them all the information they wanted before they came and arrested us. That fellow was originally my Bible study when he was a university student. <laughs> I thought, what a dirty little rotter that fellow's turned out to be. And I looked straight at his face and he wouldn't look at mine. He hung his head. The magistrate says, what? Do you know this man? And he said, yes, he was my teacher. What did he teach you? He taught me that the Chinese people's government was of the devil and that it was going to be destroyed and all who support it would be destroyed along with it. So he said to me, is that what you taught him? I said, well, I'd like to qualify that. I sat there on the floor. I had no bed. I had no chair. I'd only got a concrete floor. I'd got a room four and a half by nine, and all there was in the corner was a bucket like that, a wooden bucket at that with the bands around it. That was my restroom. And uh, the uh, situation was full of... The cell was full of vermin. It got bugs, bed bugs crawling in there and I was bitten all over. I hadn't had any food since that breakfast and here it was now. I wasn't going to get any that night. I used my time in the cell. I wasn't going to sit there on the floor full of self-pity. I was going to go preaching. Uh, if they wouldn't let me do anything, I could do something. I could practice my presentations. So each corner of the cell became a door and I would start off and go to this door and witness. And I made it quite real from experiences that I had. Not every corner was interested. This one was very interested, and this one turned out to be a return visit and a Bible study, and I got a Bible study going. I didn't turn in the field service report, but it kept my mind on the Scriptures, and I had no other way of doing that. I could have compromised. They told me, you see, they wouldn't let me cut my hair, they wouldn't let me shave, they wouldn't let me pare my nails, and uh, I couldn't get proper exercise. Or And they kept saying, if you will only confess that you're spies. No, I would, that would be betrayal. And that, that was uh, the last thing I wanted to do. I had a lovely relationship with Jehovah God. I loved him very dearly. He was real. He wasn't fictitious. And uh, the whole organization, the angels, and all the fine work of Paul, James, Peter, John, the earnestness with which they kept the work going, it was my privilege to do that now. And they were my examples, and I followed them. So never at any time did I think of trying to find an easy way out. Well, I prayed to Jehovah then, and I said, Jehovah, I want to be able to celebrate the memorial with my brothers outside. So uh, could I um, see the moon on that night? And if it wasn't the full moon, uh, let, I don't, don't let me see it. Well, there were cloudy nights and there were bright nights. But this particular night on that first Nisan 14, there wasn't a question about it. It seemed almost as if Jehovah had polished up that moon. <laughs> and then I gave the memorial talk to an imaginary 
kingdom hall full of brothers. <laughs> and uh, I gave it through. And when I came to the point of passing the emblems, I would just ask Jehovah's blessing on the bread. And I'd pick up the saucer and make a pretense of passing it around and bringing it back and making a pretense of taking a piece myself. And then I'd put it down and I would ask Jehovah's blessing on the cup and do the same with my enamel mug and send that, and then come back and make the pretense of drinking it and pray Jehovah would accept that. I don't like the word depressed because I never was depressed, but there were days when I felt things could go a little better than they were going. So I thought something like this. Oh, come all you slaves of Jehovah on high who've given your heart to your God. Out to the work you've been given to do in the footsteps that Jesus Christ trod. And then that, that, that song came. And I used to get that, uh, and the very fact of singing that song <laughs> lifted me up out of the low spell. I was exalted. I was um, exhilarated in realizing that just across the other side of the bridge was the British Consulate General with my passport, and outside there were a team of brothers that had come up to meet me from the branch, and I would be with them again. I, I was emotionally uh, almost weeping with the joy of being among them again. We just got bear hugs all around and uh, they were so happy. And uh, all the way home, they were asking questions how it was, and I was able to talk to them. And by the time I did get down there, I was getting a bit hoarse, because <laughs> I'd been talking, and I was so sort of wound up at the time being free again. And I was taking everything in as I as I went along. And I realized the beauty of Hong Kong at that time and the work that was being done there. Faith is based on accurate knowledge. And there's the only accurate knowledge available regarding the purpose of creation is that contained in the Bible. Uh, so it, it is a case, I would say a new one now, I'm telling the brothers everywhere, get that Bible off its printed page and get it into your heart, and then you've got it. And it's a living word, and it will keep you strong in the faith. Where else can you go? Where there's, look at the world, the state that it's in today. There's no uh, haven anywhere in this world, but there's a wonderful haven among Jehovah's people. Brother King endured the persecution. He was later released, and since his death in January of 1993, we are confident he is ruling as a king with Jesus in heaven. Was his endurance worth the sacrifice? Absolutely. <laughs>